Hey guys, Redneck Mini 14 here. Today I want to do a review of my new Henry X model in 360 buck hammer. Now, there are some things that I really like about this rifle, and there are a few things that I really don't like about this rifle, but it's not about the uh, the model itself, it's actually just this specific rifle. So let's get into it. So the Henry X model in 360 Buckhammer is basically the same exact gun as the 3030 X model. It's just in 360 Buckhammer. So other than the caliber, it's like dimensions are all the same. So you got the nice uh, synthetic stock uh, and fore end which comes with these molded in sling studs and you have a rail here with four slots <clears throat> and there's your sling stud for the back and your rubber butt pad um, some other things to note are the bolt is blacked out and it does have the side load gate like pretty much all Henry's are coming with these days and it has fiber optic sights so you have um, red in the rear and green in the front it has like I said it has the side load but it also has the tube load as well so you can take the tube out I'm trying to line this up here so that you can actually see it so you twist the tube and just pull it out and you got the little orange follower there. Um, as far as loading the gun, I honestly don't recommend that you load it through the tube because I've found that, at least in these larger calibers, um, the tube likes to hang up on the rims when you try to get it back down. So I practiced you know, loading through the tube on this just to see what it would do. And like I would get down to like three or four rounds and then it would get stuck and, and hung up and I was never actually able to get the tube to go all the way down. So I'll be loading through the um, side gate. But while I have the muzzle over here, I'll also show that it is threaded for a suppressor or a muzzle brake or whatever you want to put on there. Flash suppressor. So it does have that feature as well. And those are pretty much all the features of it being a, a an X model. Other than that, it's your basic Henry. I mean, I guess, you know, it does have the, the curved grip and the uh, little bit of an oversized loop here. Um, so that's also an, another good feature. If you have gloves on, um, the larger loop like this uh, does help you get your hand in there and like I've said in other videos, I do like the curved grip over the straight grip. So anyway, that's really what makes it a um, an X model. Now, it is a six plus one gun. Henry, for whatever reason, um, on their website, they'll call the 360s and the 3030s, 35 Remingtons, the 3855s, you know, all their rifle calibers, they'll say that they're all five plus one. It's actually six plus one. I don't know why they call it five plus one because you can definitely get six in there. Um, <clears throat> and their 4570s, they do the same thing. They'll say it's only like four plus one, but I've definitely seen videos of people putting six rounds in the tube before they even rack the lever. So why they're calling them four plus one, I have no idea. Call it what it is, Henry. Is it four plus one or is it six plus one? Um, so that's just one of my gripes about Henry because they always misidentify the capacity on their rifles for whatever reason. But it's not even all their rifles because like the 45 Colt that I have, it's a 10 plus one and they call it a 10 plus one. So, you know, I don't know. I'm surprised they don't call it like an eight plus one. But <clears throat> anyway... So, as far as the ammo goes, so far the only ammo I have for it is this uh, Federal Power Shock 180 grain. I do have some Remington Core Locks on the way, uh, which are 200 grain. I ordered those online, and they'll be here next week. 
but uh, so far I've got two boxes of this Federal Power Shock, which I really like Federal Power Shock. It, uh, you know, I, I shoot it in my 3030 and my 30 out six, and I've taken you know plenty of deer with them. So um, I'd like to get some 200 grains and even like some of the 220 grain. Uh, federal hammer down whenever they come out with that. I'd really like to try that, but um, I just wanted to demonstrate here How easy this particular Henry is to load. They're not all this easy um, My 45 Colts not quite this easy and not that it's hard <clears throat> But it's not as easy as this one. So I mean this thing loads like an absolute dream um, you know, my Marlin 3030 uh, doesn't load this easily. My 1894, my, my Henry Big Boy, um, none of those load quite as easily as this um, 360 buck hammer. The only one that really loads quite as nicely is my, uh, my 1895 that, um, you know, that's a 4570. So just like I was saying earlier, I would definitely not use the tube for loading, but I would definitely use it for unloading. All right, so I said earlier in the video that I have a couple of issues with this rifle, and what are those issues? So the first issue I noticed right out the gate when I was at the gun shop picking it up was that when you slowly work the lever and you come down here, it doesn't like to lock back in place. You have to, you have to really uh, work the lever with authority. Now, what's causing that? Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it has something to do with how loose this lever is. Now, I've seen people talk about loose levers and you can get shim kits for it. And I'm hoping that with a shim kit, it's going to work just fine. Um, like I said, if you, you know, work the lever with authority, it works just fine. But if you're just kind of like babying it, and really, you shouldn't be babying it in the first place when you're actually using it. But, you know, out of all my other lever action rifles, I don't ever remember any of them having this problem, but I also don't think that any of them have a lever that's quite as loose as this one. So I'm going to assume that that's the issue and I could very easily fix that theoretically with a $12 shim kit. Um, and I do plan on ordering one just because the lever is, is loose anyway. So whether or not it fixes the problem, um, I'm still gonna get the shim kit just to make the lever a little tighter. And I could use, you know, shim kits on probably all of my Marlins and my other Henrys, um, and it would really probably help them out. But I just noticed that when I was at the gun shop and I was working the lever um, and noticed that I couldn't, you know, the very first time I was working the lever, um, just couldn't get that lever seated. So I thought that was very weird. Um, but, you know, if the $12 shim kit fixes it, so be it. The other problem that I didn't actually notice at the gun store, but I noticed when I got it back home, <clears throat> is this. So, I'm not sure how well the camera is going to pick it up, but if you look down the barrel, the sights are actually canted to the right just a little bit. And... I've had a hard time figuring it out um, <clears throat> whether or not the front sight is actually centered on the barrel um, or if the whole barrel is canted. In other words, I couldn't figure out if it was only the rear sight or if it was the front sight. And sometimes I'll look at it and it looks like they're both canted. And sometimes I'll look at it and it'll look like just the rear sight's canted. But it's definitely obvious that the rear sight, at the very least, is canted. Now, I do plan on contacting Henry, seeing what I got to do to get it sent back, um, and having them correct the problem. If they have to put a different barrel on the gun, um, if there's a way of turning the barrel on the gun, I don't really know the whole process on actually 
manufacturing a gun, and if that's even possible. So I do plan on filing a warranty claim with that, and that'll be the first time I've ever had to do that with Henry um, <clears throat> because I haven't had to do that with either my 22s. I haven't had to do that with the 410. I haven't had to do that with the 45 Colt. So this will be the first time I've ever had to do that, and I'll definitely document the experience with my videos um, because, you know, my long-term goal with this gun is to be a brush gun that doesn't need to have a scope. So, you know, I, I have heard of a lot of people saying that, you know, with their new Henry's, they can't hit the broad side of a barn um, with their new Henry's. It's like their quality control is really slipping. Um, and I've seen a lot of people say that, but they, they send it back and it takes, I don't know how long it takes, you know, a couple weeks, a month, you know, however long they get it back. Um, and the problem is fixed, but you still had to go through the hassle of sending it back. So, you know, my long-term goal with this gun, like I said, was to use, uh, you know, use it as a brush gun without a scope, but change out the rear sight for a peep sight on the receiver. And if the front sight on the barrel isn't centered, that's going to be a problem. And so... I, I debated on whether or not I was gonna, you know, file the warranty claim before I shot it or after I shot it. I think I might actually file the warranty claim before I shoot it, just in case. And so, you know, and it's winter right now, so it's not like I'm out shooting a whole lot. So um, I'll file the warranty claim this week and see what they say, how I gotta get it back to them and see how long it's going to take them to fix the problem because I have no doubt that they will fix the problem. Uh, they say they have a lifetime warranty. So we'll just see what it what happens. But, you know, with the exception of those couple of problems, um, one of them, which should hopefully be an easy, easy fix, and some people would say that's really not a problem anyway because you got to, you know, work that lever with authority. Um, but, you know, with those two problems, um, I, I still really like the rifle, and as long as the rifle shoots accurately and I'm able to hit what I'm aiming at, I really would love to take this rifle out this year and try to get myself a deer with it. Hey, before I go, I just thought I'd remind everybody that I do have a second channel called Redneck Off the Range. Over there, I post most of my non-gun related content, so whether it's a video on my new tractor, my power tools, my projects that I'm working on, maybe wild game recipes, or just a random vlog, I post all of this kind of content over on my secondary channel. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, go check it out, Redneck Off the Range. But that's all for this video, so subscribe to my channel, like me on Facebook. I'm Redneck Mini 14 and until next time, be safe.